All right, this is a video about manual mode to auto mode to manual mode response check or called manual mode response check. We usually do this during the 200 hour engine inspections on the EC 135s with the Pratt and Whitney engines. It's a fairly simple check, uh, nothing crazy about it. This video will be real short. I'll just show you how to do the check and then we're going to explain why we're going to do the check or why Pratt and Whitney wants us to do this check. Pretty simple check, uh, but apparently couple people have oversped some engines. So we're gonna go through it just real fast. So if we pull up the maintenance manual, what does it say? Uh, FMM, fuel management module, auto to manual mode response check, looking in the Pratt & Whitney maintenance manual. You assume all responsibility of looking, in, looking at the information in the maintenance manual. This video is just for reference, just to help walk through what it, they're actually talking about, okay? So first thing that's really important, uh, obviously warning all procedures to be carried out in accordance with the aircraft manual. Yeah, right. Have a pilot run it up and hand them this sheet and go through it before you do the job. This caution is important. Do this procedure with all other engines in shutdown state. Okay, one engine at a time. Start one engine, do the job, shut that engine down, start the other engine and, and uh, do that check. So one engine at, the, at a time, the other engine, the other engine has to be off. Got it? It's important. Start the engine, go to 100% NR in auto mode, and don't have the uh, CAT-A or the high NR on. So 100% NR, and let's roll. Increase the engine load to reach NG of 85%, plus or minus 0.4%, and stabilize for 30 seconds. NG is also known as your N1. So go look at your N1, stabilize it at 85%, and then write down what the engine torque says for reference. That's your starting reference. So the pilot's pulling up on the collective just ever so slightly with one engine. So he gets N1 at 85%. Now that it's at 85%, we stabilize it for a little bit. And then we're going to write down our torque. And our torque right here is 44.0%. Now we're going to switch the engine from auto to manual mode using the switch and closely monitor for 20 seconds the engine torque during transition. But what happens is right when you flip the switch, see right here, it's for like half a second, it'll go either high or low. So you got it, that's the number that you want that you're looking for during the immediate transition. It doesn't change after 20 seconds, but here you go, you flip the switch, engine one, open the guard, flip it to auto, and when you do that, ready, set, flip, there it is. It dropped to 42.5 for a flash of a second. Of course, you get your engine manual warnings on your CAD. So stabilize at 85% still because he's hanging on to the collective. Now you're going to flip it back after it's stabilized. And same thing happens. For half a second, it went down to 41.0% torque. And then it'll stabilize, the N1 will stabilize back at 85%. And the torque will stabilize, looks like a little bit higher, maybe 45.0, 44.5. But the whole fluctuation from our initial 44.0 only went down to 41. So that's 3% torque. And like I said, it was only a blink of an eye. It was real fast, so you have to look at that. It's not going to change in 20 seconds. It's the first change that you're looking for, the immediate response. So if we go back to the maintenance manual, what the maintenance manual says is the engine torque transition value should always stay between plus or minus 10 of the previously established reference value, reference step 3. That's at the very beginning. Also, the switch says normal mode for auto, so don't get too confused there. Okay, and then if any of these transition torque values exceed the limits, then you have to go to the fi fault isolation manual inside of the uh, engine maintenance manual, and we're going to check that out. But that's pretty much your check. It's real simple. There's a couple other cautions that we need to read real fast, though. Hold on. To prevent engine overspeed, once 85 NG is obtained, the collective should not be moved again until the affected engine is confirmed to be in auto mode. So don't forget that, okay? Don't go pulling up on the collective or pushing down on the collective when it's in manual mode. The other caution, to prevent engine overspeed, the throttle grips are not to be manipulated during these procedural steps. Yeah, so don't just, just tell the pilot just to leave the collective where it is once you establish 85% at the beginning. So that's the check. So if you did that and the, if the torque didn't fluctuate more than 10 plus or minus, then you're good. Then it's done. Job is done, okay? But if it did fluctuate more than 10, then you need to go to the maintenance manual 
on the uh, troubleshooting. But we're going to go over that real fast. Engine control mode, auto manual transition discrepancy. That's the one you're going to look at, and we're going to go through it. Okay, what was the result of the FMM auto to manual to auto mode response check? Is it serviceable? Well, if it is, continue normal engine operation. Con congratulations. If it's not, no. Do a check of the PLA rigging. That's from the aircraft. That's from the aircraft twist grips all the way to the FMM. Check the rigging. Is it okay? Yes. Yes, it's okay. Then what do they want you to do in the Pratt & Whitney manual? Oh, they want you to check the P3 air supply to the FMM. Is it serviceable? Well, let's just say it's not. And then you go ahead and you go clean the number eight bearing seal housing in the engine. You put it all back together. You do this whole job. Again, the manual mode response check. And if it still fails, then they want you to change your FMM. That means all that garbage from the P3 air supply went into your FMM and screwed it up. So that's pretty simple. But let's just go over the uh, number eight bearing steel housing and the P3 air and how it how it works just briefly. All right, just a quick review. So right here is uh, from the maintenance manual of the engine, the Pratt & Whitney 206 B2 is what we're looking at. This is the front bearing seal housing for the number eight bearing and the P3 fitting that goes onto the side of it. And inside of there fills up with a lot of garbage. All the dust that flies into your engine goes into your P3. All the grass, if you're landing in the fields and you're landing at scenes and you're a lot of cut grass in the summer and the spring or whatever, and it goes into your intake, it chops all that grass up and turns it into dust and it goes into your P3. Or, or you know, some of it does and the rest of it goes gets burnt up and goes out the back. But this thing will get filled up with a lot of dirt. It's just tiny, 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 fine dust particles and it just jams it up. It gets all caked inside of there. It screws up the seal. Your first sign that this thing's clogged up is that your seal is starting to leak oil. The P3 air supply comes from your P3 air from your compressor. The plumbing is internal inside of the engine. The first time it comes out of the engine is this fitting right here. That's your P3 nipple is what they call it. And this is your front bearing seal housing your number eight bearing seal housing, all right? It's, your, it's right on your output drive. And if you follow this line, this line goes to the FMM. So essentially, your front housing is like your P3 filter because there's no P3 filter on this, on this engine, which is fine. I mean, honestly, I really haven't ran into too many problems with this, but it will definitely get a lot of garbage in there. But this red line shows the flow of the P3 air comes out of the engine, goes into the housing right here. It pressurizes the housing with the seal. It's a carbon seal, but it works with pressure. And on the back side of that seal is that it's open, like all the way around this whole seal is a big space between the seal and the housing. So that air can go all the way around the seal and pressurize it. So part of that air goes into the, the housing and the other part of the air goes up into the FMM. It goes up this tube and around into the P3 air fitting for the, or the P3 air input for the fuel management module. So if we look at the cross section of the reduction gearbox, the red lines are pointing to the, the number eight uh, bearing seal and the seal housing. And it's kind of hard to see, but we're going to zoom in, but there's a huge gap, like I was saying, between the housing and the seal so that air can go all the way around the seal and pressurize the seal. If this, if that space gets filled in with a whole bunch of dust and a bunch of crap, then it's not going to seal very well. Here's a picture of the seal. The, and obviously it seals the output drive right at the bottom of this lip. What you'll get oil coming out of there or oil will start to pool up there because the seal won't seal very well. This one is a, is a good seal. This one's clean. I don't know what these little particles are. It looks like dust or whatever, but there's no oil coming out of there, which is good. All right, that's it for the manual mode response check that we do on the 200-hour engine inspections. It's pretty easy. All you got to do is make sure that the NG that they're talking about is N1 on your screen, and the other engine is shut down when you're doing this job. One engine at a time. Um, don't jockey the throttles ever, and don't move the collective. Once you're stabilized at 85%, it's pretty easy. Write your numbers down. Like I said, it will fluctuate right when you flip the switch, just a tiny bit, usually one, two, three percent, plus or minus. 
I've never seen anything really above five. Um, if you do, you probably need a new FMM or your bearing housing is jammed up with a whole bunch of garbage. Anyway, that's this video. I hope you guys found some value in it. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.